We are a quarter way through and it feels really good. All right, halfway. I'm starting to pick up a little pace, at least I'm supposed to. I'm at the three quarter mark and uh, yeah, walking a little bit. 26.2 miles at 205 pounds. This was a worry for me from the beginning. Is this too much weight? I don't know. Like I, I see people out there that can handle the stresses on their body of moving so much weight, but it has a lot to do with like genetics and stuff. So I want to talk about like my whole experience with this marathon, the Salvi Island foot traffic marathon, what I liked, what I want to change, what I disliked maybe, and just the whole experience from start to finish. So I got to start off with saying I had such a great time doing a marathon. And as someone about 130 days ago who was barely running a mile and who hated endurance and cardio, I really suck at running mile and a half nine minute pace. I'm thrilled that that's what I was thinking because the worst thing that could happen is I hated the whole experience. And then what do I do? Like I'm training for an Ironman and I'm just really grinding. And mentally when you're doing endurance sports, you have to enjoy the whole process because we're not talking going through a CrossFit workout, really just embracing the suck for like 20, maybe at most a 40 minute EMOM. We're talking hours upon hours of just pushing yourself. So the marathon had a game plan that I talked to with my Ironman coach of how I can go for that sub four hour marathon and leading up to it. If you saw my previous video, I knew that based on my schedule, based on taking vacation and just work and everything, just all coming together during the summer that it may not have been likely. But I still wanted to push myself because it is a race after all. And for me, I'm not racing against other people. I'm racing against my own potential. So that's what I did. What the breakdown was start as slow as possible and really just focus on my own race and do my best not to go hot out of the gate. And when I started, I was at the ass end of the pack and it really worried me. I was like, well, I guess I'm primed up to be that last person to cross the finish, but just, just taking a beat, taking a breath and being like, okay, let me just use my watch. Let me pace myself and just adhere to that nine 30 per minute mile pace just to start. And I segmented the whole race into four sections of about six and a half miles per section. The first thing I noticed it's a little chilly, kind of cold, and I love it training in this Austin heat made me so much better for that game time temperature up in Oregon. And I think that's the way to do it. There was a couple things being two hours behind. So that 610 race time was actually eight o'clock my time here in central and just that beautiful Oregon summer weather where a lot of people were just even wearing jackets. Not me. I'm going to sweat my ass off, but that's how it started. And I am on the road. I am going, I am enjoying this whole Island race and we're moving. We're hitting that 930 pace and not even that we're doing much better. We're 11 seconds per minute mile faster. Was that the bad thing to do? I don't really know. I personally don't think it really affected my overall time because my heart rate was where it needed to be. Mentally, I felt good. And so I was just kind of feeling my way out. The weather, the humidity, everything's perfect. So crazy how I've been training in 100 degree weather and now it's like 60 something. Still sweating, gonna have to pop the top, but what a gorgeous run. Just enjoying myself, sticking to my game plan. Everyone fucking took off right at the beginning, but sticking to my plan. And then that was just going into that second segment where I'm going to hit that 915, where I once again dropped my time going faster, about six seconds per minute faster. I'm not experienced enough to know if that is what hurt me. I really don't think it did. Again, I was just kind of feeling my way and just wanting to really run my race. All right, halfway starting to pick up a little pace at least i'm supposed to but feeling okay i guess it's funny 
every time I see a bigger dude, it's always like a gentle nod, like, hey, we're out here too. So get back into it and see if I can hold a pace to get that sub four, but we'll see. Now we start getting into that third segment and that's where we started having a bit of issues. I'm at the three quarter mark and uh, yeah, walking a little bit because I know my body and I feel like I'm at that fatigue injury prone level and you know, to hurt myself would be so stupid. At this point, we're just pushing ourselves as much, being smart about it and finishing. And I feel like even though I got 10K left, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's get it. I gotta say, whoever designed this course and decided to put the steepest hill, not only one. So I'm making the turn and I'm like, okay, this, sucks. this is the first decent hill that I've seen and it's not a baby hill it's a pretty good one at least for someone that is well into a race like at the half marathon mark I felt fantastic if I would have just signed up for a half like originally I kind of thought to do and even at the last minute they give you the option to change your race even on race day I wouldn't have been satisfied I would have ran my race I would have felt okay and I would have even PR'd my half marathon time but coming around to seeing that hill, I get up it and I'm like, okay, body's not feeling 100%, but we're making it up. And then you make another turn. And what do you see up there at a turnaround? And another hill. Honestly, putting this in the last nine miles, so mean. So mean. Mentally, I was kind of like beaten down by it. All right, we just passed mile marker 18. I'm kind of breaking down a bit. My calves, I can feel them kind of cramping, and I'm just really chugging electrolytes as much as my stomach can stomach. So play it smart and just keep going. And an interesting thing I saw, if you're not aware, I use the Garmin 965, and just Garmin's the main platform I used to train on, so it trains all of my workouts, at least as much as possible when I'm wearing it. And I noticed at the time I started feeling bad things with my ankle and that was really the only thing and then really starting to slow down is when my stamina level according to Garmin hit zero percent or one percent whatever I'm sure it's a fractional amount and I think that has a lot to do with it like mostly from not building enough endurance in the short relative time frame on where I was in March to the marathon time and I, I think that's a big focus I need forward is to continually build that endurance and make sure that my pacing is equivalent to my current endurance level, which is incredibly fascinating. That's why I love tools like this. Despite where my stamina is going to be, it was 18 miles. I still had eight miles left of the race. I'm not trying to make excuses for myself, but 205 pounds pounding on my frame trying to push myself at my current running fitness level hasn't been great. I just passed mile marker 21 and I am walking a lot. Like right now, I would not be surprised if I don't PR. But God, it's a beautiful morning. We're getting it done, it's fun. And I just gotta remind myself, wow. And it just mentally, it, it beats you down. This is where you know, DNFing or getting out of the race, not finishing was not something that occurred to me. But man, did that last segment feel just as long as the previous 18 miles that I ran. And I just tried to push myself as much as possible, but being smart about it. I could have really pushed myself and set a PR for a marathon time, but at what cost? I could feel my left ankle breaking down again i think some of it does have to do with form i've had, always had this like weird heel whip going on on my left side and i need to correct that but also carrying the weight despite how i felt 
the scenery, like I said before, was just gorgeous. It was a beautiful day. It was the 4th of July, which is probably my favorite holiday. And I was just thinking mentally of everything that was going right. And at All the right. end of it, I'm going to have some beautiful, mile delicious life. meal. Making that last turn on the course, and I could just, I could see the finish line was just an esteem boost where I was like, okay, I just, I, I gotta run as much as I possibly can and just finish the race. And that's exactly what I did. It, again, it was just a, a great experience. And then that feeling, like <laughs> looking back at my stats, like I think it was like 3,300 calories burned. I ended up burning like over 5,000 on the day, 50,000 plus steps. And my day wasn't over. I still had to go over to a uh, beautiful Astoria to go see my sister and her husband and hang out there for the day. So I had to make that drive, but it, it was just a wonderful experience. And uh, this isn't going to be the last marathon that I do. This is going to be something along with triathlons that I want to keep in my rotation of fitness. And that was one of my biggest takeaways. 205 pounds. Yeah, you can do it. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, uh, taller people that are going to be over a couple hundred pounds. It makes sense because it's more distribution of the weight. I'm six foot tall, so I'm just a little shorter, denser of carrying so much weight and just removing 15 pounds off my frame of hopefully fat probably going to be a little muscle, lose a little strength is just going to make me feel so much better, so much faster. So all this training I've done is going to be like, as if I was carrying a 15 to 20 pound weight vest. And that, that's what I'm going to be most excited about. So it's going to be a bit of a process of training so much, also losing the weight, but I'm excited for what's next. And if a marathon, half marathon, whatever race has been on your bucket list, I'd say go for it because mentally I feel so good, so accomplished, and I can't wait for the next race.